everyone, I'm PJ from Princess Craft RV. Today, I'm gonna to show you around the 153 R-Pod. Now, this is the smallest R-Pod that they make, has a rear entry, but amazingly spacious on the inside. It's incredible that they can fit an eight cubic foot refrigerator, a dry bath, nice sleeping, microwave convection. I mean, it's not crowded. It is so spectacular. At about 3,500 pounds, this trailer is only 17 foot six inches long. It has a 350 tongue weight. All that to say, if you only have 5,000 pounds towing capacity, this works beautifully. It is a great couples coach. Now remember, features and options, they can always change. So be sure to check the trailer that you're interested in with that dealer. All right, let's start inside because, wow, you're gonna be impressed what's inside this small trailer. Now walking in, it is a hallway here, a little more spacious in front, but I'm gonna start showing you what's right here at the door. Now on this side, you have two cubbies here that are very tall, probably two and a half foot, and they go all the way back to the back wall. So they are the depth of this refrigerator. Nets on the front on the bottom half, so it, it can easily hold anything you wanna stack in there. Now the nets can just clip off here if you wanted to add shelving. You know, this space right here can be anything. The best thing I like is that there isn't a door. Why? Because a door is gonna be in the way here when you open it. It's just gonna be cumbersome. So you wanna use every inch when you're in a small trailer, that is very accessible. You don't want the refrigerator in the corner, so they gave you a great space. Now on the wall across from the storage, you'll see a lot of panels for control. So let's review that real quick. Top left is gonna be the stereo. And of course it's got Bluetooth technology. There is an IRV app that you can download on your phone that will not only allow you to control the stereo, but sometimes you can add on lights and awnings too. On the left, uh, the tanks, and of course, a general battery uh, charge limit here. Um, you have 30 gallon black, 30 gray, and 30 fresh on this, just like most R pods. So pretty big tanks for a little 17 foot unit, don't you think? Down below, the water heater and the water pump. It is a six gallon DSi water heater, and that means it can run on gas or electric. The gas is controlled right here on the switch, the electric is plugged in outside. The water pump right here is gonna pressure up the system if you're pulling from the water tank. The switches right here, just the general switches for the coach. On the left, you have the switch to put the awning out and in. There is a nice electric awning on the side. The next one is gonna be the LED lights on the awning, and I like the way that button is red so it lights up. You don't leave that on when you're bringing them in porch light, and then of course the interior lights all right here as you walk in the door. Here at the top is the solar charge controller. It's blinking because we don't have a battery on board. So it's saying, ah, I don't know what I'm doing, but this trailer comes with a 110 watt solar panel on the roof. Very handy, keep you charged even if you're not at a campground plugged in. And that will tell you how much power it's charging into the batteries and how much you're using. So very useful up there. The controller is needed because you wanna be sure that solar panel doesn't overcharge your batteries. Let's take a look at this refrigerator. Now, not only is it got these beautiful gray panels on the front that make it look like cabinetry, I love the new colors this year. They really have a great contrast, um, but it is a huge refrigerator for this size of a trailer. I'll tell you, it is so unusual to find a trailer this size with this space in it. Now it is a gas electric, which means it'll run on electric when you plug in at the campsite. But if you're off grid, then you will certainly want to um, run it on gas. Now it's hard for me to show that to you because if I stand in front, you can't see anything in this aisle. But all the controls right here down below, you'll see the furnace. It is a forest air furnace, 20,000 BTU. So you want to camp in cold weather? That's going to keep it toasty in here. 
The bathroom is directly across. Of course, the controls right here for the air conditioner. The standard air conditioner on this unit is a 13.5. Now you can upgrade to the 15,000 BTU air conditioner if you'd like a little more AC power. Before we show you the main part of the trailer, let's just take a peek in this nice dry bath. Now walking into the bathroom here, yeah, there's not a lot of dancing room, but there's plenty of space. Let's start up at the top. There is a fantastic vent in here. What that means is you get a very high powered vent to move air. That's not only gonna help in the bathroom with steam from the shower, that type of thing, but it can also move air from the entire camper. You'll notice when you close the door here, there's about a three inch gap at the top and a three inch gap at the bottom. They want to give you the maximum amount of privacy, but also allow the air to flow through. So if you have that bathroom door closed, that can still move the air throughout the entire trailer. I think that's a great feature. Switches right here to the left of the door and a 110 plug right next to the counter. I like the counter space on the right. They've made it a little narrower than the sink, but a great space to keep what you need to keep in the bathroom. Down below that, a fairly large cubby with the net at the front. You're also going to have some storage right here underneath the sink. You know, I like to point out too, people always customize. There is a huge wall on the side here that you could hang, you know, maybe a net or put some more shelves up, anything that would work for you. But you've also got the mirror here with two shelves in there and then another open space underneath. Again, I love the gray accents on this, but plenty of space in here to store what you need. Now, this is the first place we've seen the nice uh, wood countertop. It's meant to be a little bit modern, a little bit rustic, uh, just a great feature. A small bathroom sink, but that's all you need in the bathroom, right? And behind me, you'll see the shower. One piece shower wrap on the back. It's rectangular. Now it's six foot six inside the camper. When you step in the shower with the skylight, it goes down to about six foot three. So be aware that if you're taller than that, you may have to tip just a bit to stand in the shower. The spray handle at the top has the controls down at the bottom, so it's a simple to use one, nothing complicated here. What I do like is that it's a fairly spacious shower, but they put the curve at the top in this uh, curtain, and it is on the track. So when you close it, it's going to give you even more elbow room when you're in the shower, but you don't have to worry about that curtain moving on the bottom because it's in the track. So a really nice workable bathroom here. All right, we're gonna move on to the more interesting stuff now. Let's talk about the living area. Just past the refrigerator is this long bench on one side. That's part of what makes it feel so open, I think. Um, the bench is great seating. You know, if you have somebody who wants to just sit here and visit, you don't have to move all the way to the back of the trailer. You could easily see four people in here and have a very comfortable conversation. Big window back here that opens and another one next to it, that makes it feel really spacious. You have two on the other side too, so you get great airflow. Let's look at the storage up here. Have I mentioned these gray cabinets once, maybe twice? I don't know. I love the feel of this. And uh, the, I guess this is bronze, maybe a gold tone to it uh, on the hardware. So this cabinet goes the full length without any dividers. It is about uh, 12 inches deep and you can see it's open all the way down. Oh, they are a little stiff to open and that's because they want these to be tight so nothing opens going down the road. These pieces inside here, um, I know some people use plastic, but this is a glass panel. It's got a nice modern frost to it, so you can't see what's in there, but you get the nice reflective feel of a glass front cabinet. Really nice there. Now, all the shades are going to be the pleated shades, so you can get the blackout uh, feel there. 
the valances, you've got nothing flopping, no curtains. That's part of what makes this feel so comfortable, so modern. Down below, two more cubbies with the netting on the front. Now remember with this netting, it's put on with hooks. So if it doesn't work for you, you can simply take it off. Easy to unhook down there. To the right here is going to be the converter. The converter, of course, converts that uh, energy that you're getting when you plug in at the campsite and changing it to 12 volt like your battery uses inside the coach. It's also going to trickle charge the battery from the plug-in at your campsite and all the breakers and fuses are right in front. So uh, we have been asked before if this makes a bed. It does not. It is simply bench seating here, but again, really comfortable. Now, these two lights are done independently, but it is one of the nicer features here. Um, I might be sitting sideways on this bench with my computer on my lap. Want to plug it in? There is a plug right here at the top, household plug, and two USBs right there under the cabinet. Now, the seating in the back is a dinette. Let's take a look at that. So let's start with this dinette. It's really comfortable for two people. Nice wide seating, nice back to lean on here. This table, it's sturdy. Not only is it this nice wood, but it's got two poles on it so it doesn't wiggle when you're eating or working on it. That's a super nice feature. Now, some of you may be asking if you can turn this into a bed just right here. I imagine you could do that because to make this into a bed, you see the mattress is flipped in half. You drop this down. Uh, it's got little uh, bumps here that the table sets on. Uh, then you can pull these cushions over and simply flip that down. It's very simple to do. It makes for a nice bed. And if you wanted to leave the bed set up all the time, you've still got this nice bench seat to work from. So very simple operation. You know, the only suggestion I have is that when you flip this over, it's got a very nice bed spread on it now, but you can't see it because it's on the inside. Much better to maybe have something right here. And for those of you who will enjoy this unit, I bet you're crafty enough to make that happen. The last thing about this space, there is storage underneath this seating. Remember, it's open under the bench. There is uh, storage under here if you lift up the panel underneath this cushion. There is not storage under the other side. Now up here underneath the mattress is the pass-through storage from the outside. So that gives you an idea of where you can put all those great things you're going to take with you. Let's take a look at the window right up front. I want to show you how that works because if you're not familiar with it, it's a nice plus that you need to know. This front window is a dual pane acrylic window. The best part, it opens completely like an awning so that you can get full air through through here. It does have a screen that comes down and a blackout shade. And of course they hook together so that you could get a little privacy and maybe a little bit of air at the same time. So these just fold right back up. Now to open it up, you just open these red latches. I've already done the ones on that side. And then you push it open. And when you get it as far open as you want it to be, I know it's hard to see, you tighten the knobs on each side. Now what those knobs do is they hold it wherever you've set it. Again, then you can pull down the screen and set it however you'd like. But this is such great airflow through here. And that's one of the things that I think is really important in a trailer, particularly if you want to get off the beaten path. Power fan in the bathroom, two windows on each side, and a giant opening window in the front. That's pretty incredible for a 17-foot trailer. Love this design for that reason. All right, loosen up this knob right here. There is one on both sides. I'm only doing one. I also want to show you down at the bottom, there is a slit right here. And if you put that latch in between, you will have some airflow here. Maybe good venting if you're sleeping at night and you want to just get a little bit of outside air. But you don't want to go down the road like this because air will get under that and it can damage the window. So be sure before you travel that you hook it all the way in front like that. 
You'll latch all these down and you can do both sides and you're ready to travel. Now that we've made it over here to the kitchen area, you can see why I like this so much. When you're sitting on the bench seating over here, this is your view. You have a 28 inch television, storage up here with a really nice brass hardware. Look at this faucet, it's just so classy. A deep round barrel sink, it's about eight inches deep, so plenty of space there. The cover on it, of course, it can act as a countertop or it's got some slots in it so you could drain some dishes here, set them up here to dry. On the left, two burner stove. And again, when the top is down, it's simply more countertop. Below that, the microwave convection. All our pods are gonna have a microwave convection combination. If you're not familiar with convections, you can broil a steak, you could bake a cake, you could do anything in that oven that you could do at home in your standard oven. Very nice feature. And there is a book that comes with it to tell you how to do that. Down below, one of the best features in our pods, and that is the road vac. It's such a nice feature. You can get the extra tools to have hoses and vacuum your camper. But for most of us, it's just easy to sweep and then lift this up and it comes on. And then you sweep everything in there and then you pop it back down with your foot. I can show you, but beware, it's a little loud. <laughs> That's super nice because you just sweep up the main floor, everything goes in there, and it's easy to collect it. You can go to the Road Vac site to show how to just empty the bag that's inside there. All right, storage down here. You've got two shelves. The top one is gonna only go halfway back, just like the bottom one. So you've only got about a foot there in depth, but, that's great for cereal boxes, canned goods, anything that you'd like to put there. You've still got a fair amount of space. Let's take just a little closer look at the cabinet that's above the stove. I just, again, I love the look of it on the outside, but the inside, it's about 12 inches deep. It's gonna give you plenty of height. Great place, again, for more kitchen items. Right now you can see that there's a TPMS system in there. That is standard with this trailer. So many standards here and we're not done. There's more, but this TPMS system, it's so great because it is going to monitor the tires on your trailer. It's programmable. There is a QR code sticker right at the door that's gonna tell you how to set that up in case your dealer doesn't go over that with you. A uh, very nice feature to add onto here. I love the, the window that's in the kitchen. Open it up when you're cooking if you need a little extra ventilation there. And a few more things I wanna show you on the right. On the side of this cabinet, there is a standard 110 plug, just like you have at home. And to the right, there is what we call a WIFCO monitor. That's because this trailer is standard with a thousand watt inverter. What's that gonna do for you? That is gonna make this plug right here work even if you're not plugged in at a campsite. So if you want to just pull over to the side of the road, or if you want to camp somewhere off the beaten path, you still have a household plug that can run small appliances or maybe charge your computer right here. Really nice addition to this trailer. There's a few more great things that we'll talk about once we get outside. And speaking of outside, let's go out there and see what we can find. Stepping out, of course, this is a rear entry, so we're gonna start right here. I wanna show you this comes standard with the Moride steps. Uh, these are probably the sturdiest, easiest steps on the market. They are aluminum and they just flip up and clip into place. It's just really easy. They are adjustable on the bottom, so if you have a little terrain, get that door shut, that maybe isn't flat, that you can use those steps and adjust the bottom of them so they're extremely sturdy. All glass back door. 
a real slick look. You do have the window in the top so you can see out and you can bring that shade down to cover it. Now, the only downside I can think of to have a rear entry is you do have this spare tire mounted here on the bumper. You know, the best suggestion I can have is get the tire cover that you love, that matches your decor, gives you a little style, cover that up with a nice tire cover, you're good to go. All right, it is pre-wired for a backup camera. If you'd like to add that, your dealer should be able to help you with that, no problem. The handle on the side, of course, folds in. Really nice feature to get in and out. And let's go around this side and take a look at the connections. We're gonna start with the black tank flush here. Of course, that's gonna clean out your black tank whenever you go to dump. And down below, you'll see the sewer hose connection along with some low point drains right there. The black and the gray both dump. And it is a 30 gallon black, 30 gallon gray, 30 gallon fresh. So tons of water capacity here. If you have cable or satellite wherever you're hooked up, then you've got it right here that you can add in. And moving in front of the wheel, you will see the six gallon water heater. It is the gas switch on the inside, but there is an electric switch right here on the bottom left if you wanna run it strictly on electric. Let's put that back together. Right there. Next to that, city water hookup. If you're running straight from the hydrant or if you wanna fill that 30 gallon fresh water tank, it's right here. You do have a drain just underneath to drain that fresh water tank as well. This is the pass-through storage that goes underneath the mattress where it's folded in half. It is a really nice open section, no obstructions, just goes all the way through. Magnetic catches on the top. It's always super nice. You don't have anything to clip in. Drop it down and close it up. Stabilizer jacks on all four corners. Of course, they're manual. And right up here, very easily accessible, is a battery disconnect switch. You only want to use that, of course, when you're putting it in storage. If you disconnect that going down the road, your battery is not going to charge. But once you put it in storage, a very convenient thing to have. To the right, another standard feature. So many nice standard features on this trailer. Electric jack and your single propane right on the back. Now, just behind this, you'll see the two rails for a battery. If you wanted to put two batteries there, there's plenty of space. Most dealers are gonna start with a wet cell battery, standard battery like you have on your car. You can upgrade to lithium, and I mention that just because there's so many great features on this trailer for getting off the grid. You might wanna consider that. Coming around on this side, there is the uh, compartment door that goes into that pass-through storage that goes all the way through. And then we can see this nice eight-foot electric awning that covers what they call a bush kitchen. It is their name for an outside kitchen, which includes this griddle, the suburban griddle that hangs on the side here. It also has this very long coiled sprayer. What a nice feature. I mean, you could use this to uh, kill a campfire or wash dishes, uh, anything that you'd like to do out here. You might even want a shower tent out here if you're at the beach whatever works for you. And of course it just disconnects right here at the camper and you can store it inside in your compartment and the table that sets up right here as well. So it's real easy to cook right out here. If you wanted to hook up another gas operated appliance here, you can plug in just underneath, just like this gas grill is. So it can make a very nice outside kitchen. So this bush kitchen is one of the options that you can get on the R-Pod models. One more thing I wanna mention. If you are looking to get off the beaten path, you might wanna consider the beast mode package. That is gonna be the Kurt independent suspension and the off-road tires. Great addition to any R-Pod. Before we go, I just wanna point out the bronze wheels on this. I just love the way they make the exterior, the wheels, the interior. Everything works together and looks so nice. Under here, you do have 110 outlets for party lights or anything else you'd like to add. The vent for the refrigerator and the furnace right here. And 
I know I've covered a lot of the highlights here, but if there's something we haven't talked about or that you have a question on, please let me know. I'm PJ from Princess Craft RV, and thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. <music>